Hey everyone, welcome back to another FX Home live stream. First things first, can you let us know if you can see us and you can hear us? We had some issues uh, as we always do with the live stream setup, so we spent the last 20 minutes running around and acting a lot more uh, energetic than we are right now. But yeah, as, as I said, let us, let us know if you can see us. Um, we know that there is probably some video quality issues. We were trying to sort that out. Uh, yeah, video is a little fuzzy. We don't know why. We're working on it. Um, we did upgrade to 1080p, so you know it's a good thing that we, we're getting the, the full use out of that right now. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that for next time. We know it's a little bit crunchy at the moment. I can see it here, uh, but we will we'll try and sort that out for the future. How's everyone doing? I can see people filtering in. We've got 22 at the moment, which is cool. We are streaming on YouTube and Twitch, which is uh, we were doing uh, Twitch before, um, and we've added YouTube in um, as a little taster of what these live streams are like. Um, but yeah, cool. We let's see who who do we got here today in the studio. We've got myself. We've got Louisa on the desk. Welcome. Um, how are you feeling? Are you excited? I'm, I'm I'm feeling good. I'm a little bit nervous. It's a bit like scary it's very it's sort of like like it just feels like it's, everything's closing in, and then all of yeah. a sudden it's just like you're it's like I can't take back anything I say. No. So it's like be very careful. Yeah, <laughs> but we're glad to have you here. Louisa has been um, helping us with the comp controlling, so she's been doing the cameras on the previous two live streams. This is the third one that we've done. Um, but we wanted to get her here on the desk. And we've got Tom, who we don't have a camera for again, uh, over on the comp. Hey, everyone. You should be How's able to hear him. Yeah, should be able to hear him. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we've got all our, all our colleagues and coworkers upstairs and stuff. Um, but I can see the, the hellos coming in. We've got a couple of Hey Louises from, we've got Phil, we've got Amy, uh, we've got Matt upstairs. Everyone is starting to filter and this is good stuff. From Indonesia as well. Indonesia, Ooh, yeah, it's it's cool to see. Guys. It's always cool to see the, the 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 countries that come in. Um, so say where you're from if you are, if you if you want to. Uh, we are of course in the UK. We get a question about that often. Yeah, somebody left a comment on the um the the Instagram mm -hmm. with the cutouts, and they were like, "We thought you were in Australia." It's yeah, like, no, <laughs> you couldn't have been more wrong. No, to Americans, be fair, but... yeah, we can detect that there's an accent, but sometimes it's like British or Australian. Um, they're very we're, different we're, we're, accents. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are in the UK. We are in Norwich, UK. Um, this is our only branch, but we do have people around the world. So Phil, for example, is in the US. We've got people. We, of course, work with Artlist, who are in Israel. Um, but we are here in Norwich, UK at the moment, which is yeah. is cool. And the weather has just turned. I don't yeah. know about everyone else in the world, but it is now fall. Oh, yeah. Which I'm not happy. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like we skipped autumn. It's, it's just winter. I woke yeah. up this morning. I put my hand out on my blankets and it was like immediately freezing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to leave. Yeah. It <laughs> I'm was, already. Yeah. So get those coats out um, and turn up the heating because it is. It oh, is or don't cold. turn up the heating with the cost of living. No. <laughs> we just <laughs> freeze to death or yeah. pay money. Yeah. Um, we've got Ollie. We've got someone from Germany as well Ooh. from, uh, uh, let's see, who is it? Colorado. I think I see a Chile. Yes. Chile. Oh, yeah. Chile. Chile. I don't know. I can't remember. I was, is it Chile? <laughs> I get my accents, accents mixed up. I've been here for four years and sometimes I say things in your guys' accents. Would you say I Chile? I, well, no, the other day I said tomato and I was like, I don't know what that tomato. is. It sounds weird. It sounds like a mix of, um, it's just awful. All You're around, turning so. British. Yeah. Um, but cool. With people coming in, we've uh, also got Josh in the studio right now for a surprise. He's checking me. <laughs> he's checking on that stream quality. <laughs> checking on that stream quality. It's, um, it is worse than it has been the previous two weeks. Like it's consistently uh, consistently not, crunchy. Yeah, not looking good. The only difference that I can think of is upgrading to 1080p. So maybe it was so like, it was our it was fault like, for paying more money. Basically. It was like 180p. Yeah, and we didn't realize, yeah. and now uh, we're paying that price. But um, as long as you can hear us and there isn't a lag, you know, just put us on in the background until we get to the screen capture stuff, and then we'll, you know, try and do something. Uh, Matt says maybe the weather's messing with the stream. Maybe potentially yeah. it's pretty bad out there. Uh, we've got someone from Japan, which is cool. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, looking look at all kinds of stuff. So cool. Got about forty people in at the moment, which is uh, which is nice. We we typically don't dive in right away, and we give people a couple minutes to filter in. Um, but uh, yeah, we do have some news at the end, which we will cover. Um, so stick around for that because we do want the community to be a part of that um, and sort of hear it and, and get your guys' honest responses and. Um, probably some thank yous in there as well. So stick around for that. And that will be right at the end. Um, hi from, I don't even know. As Azor? Azor? Az Azor is, yeah. That sounds, that sounds, sounds like. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be warmer than here. Yeah. Um, cool. All right, let's see. The let's video see is blurry, yet the graphics are crisp. I think we can take that. That means that the screen recordings will probably be all right. 
it's the one where like a little little box in the corner yeah. it won't matter so much. i think the, i think you mean i think they mean the graphics like the yeah. fx logo and the, the yeah. comments and stuff it's all right yeah half and half yeah we'll take it. It. um so what are we talking about today last week or two weeks ago in the last live stream we talked about uh ai art and how it can be used in the text uh, context of filmmaking and, and visual effects and we're kind of returning that to returning to it today we're going to be taking a look at nvidia canvas again um, which Louisa, have you used before? I've Nvidia never Canvas? used it before. Cool. Obviously I watched the video mm -hmm. and I've made a few TikToks using the footage that you made, yes. but I've never actually played with it myself. So I'm very excited. Cool. Yeah. So we'll be taking a look at that. We'll be building our own skies and our own environments in, uh, in Canvas. Each of us will be doing it. We're both sharing our screens. Um, so we'll be flipping back and forth and then we're going to be compositing that into hit film. So a couple of you guys had questions about how do we create that example, which I think I have here. Let me see. Um, how do I create this sort of sky replacement effect? And we're going to be taking a look at that today. So yeah, this is the clip that we showed last time. This is the unedited clip from ArtGrid. And then I took the canvas environment and I turned it into this, which is, um, you know, depending on your scene, depending on your story, it might call for something a bit more fantasy, a bit more, um, stylized like this. And we got a couple questions of how do I do that? How do I accomplish this in hit film? Um, so we're going to be doing that as well. We're going to be diving into hit film and taking a look at the sort of compositing process. I have removed some of the more boring parts like the rotoscoping and the motion tracking. I'll talk about it a little bit, but um, for the most part, we're gonna focus on the, the fun bits like painting and all the Bob Ross type stuff and uh, compositing the hit film. I'm ready to become an artist. Yes. Uh, and, and like you said, you've seen the stuff that we made last week and put it into TikToks and created wipes. TikTok and, loved it. Yeah, I thought I was TikTok say, went TikTok like crazy for it. Well, and yeah. everybody really wants to see. So if any of you guys are from TikTok, mm -hmm. let, let me know in the chat so yes. I can feel very validated. <laughs> I got someone from Austria as well. Hi from awesome. London. That's very, uh, well, it's kind of close. It's about a two hour train ride from us. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. So we're a couple minutes in, they're still sorting the quality of stuff. Um, but is uh, and we have a question here. Will it be a static sky or are you going to animate it as well? This will be a static one. So it'll just be a picture um, because we only have an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, that's one of the things about working with AI art is, is outputs a static image. You combine that with some live action footage and hit film. Suddenly you have something that moves. Um, so you don't have to put in that work to uh, animate like the sky or the clouds or something like that. Um, cool. So from New York as well, baguette, fromage and baguette. Is that French? France, I think. From Margin, that sounds French. I think it's French. Yeah, the get yeah. sounds French. It's like that's a French word, right? Yeah. Mom, mama, must say mama mia. It's the wrong language. <laughs> so, almost. Weird. I can't take it back because yeah. it's live as well. Everyone knows I'm an idiot. No, now. that's okay. It's all good. We're all, no, we all have fun. We all have fun. Um, <laughs> Tom, how are we doing? Uh, just a status check in. Should I continue? Should I? Put Should we on stall? Pause? No, no, no. We're, we're all okay. Bye we're for playing time. Playing around with a couple of settings while we're going, just to make sure that the visuals are on on par for you guys. We've actually gone down to 720, so do let us know if that looks better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let, let's keep keep going for the moment. Cool. It does look a little bit. Yeah, on Yeah, looking my at the preview here, yeah. it looks looks okay. a little bit less crunchy, yeah. which is nice. Okay. Let us know in the chat as well. Okay. Cool. Uh, Phil says it looks clearer, which is great. Cool. Okay. He also had a question, uh, Phil, about the AI stuff. So he's noticed that the original plate had an overcast sky. Is that the preferred scenario to film in when doing something like this? The thing about Canvas is that it can create sort of any environment that you want, but you can't put where the sun is currently. You can't tell that the sun should be here or you know high in the sky behind the clouds. Um, so in the case of compositing, it's not necessarily better or worse to have an overcast sky. Um, in this case, it was just a matter of matching the Canvas environment with the live action plate. Um, and we'll go through that once we open Canvas. Uh, so yeah, not better or worse, depends on what you want to achieve in the final result. And we'll take a look at that. Do you think that's something they'll add into the NVIDIA Canvas later, like the ability to move the sun around? It would be cool because um, we'll, you'll probably see it in the in the experimentation, but sometimes it just puts it in the right, completely <laughs> wrong spot. It's, it puts it in the middle of the mountain and it's got light oh, rays and everything. It's and trying. Like, you tried, it's, yeah. like, it's the AI. That's, that makes me feel a bit more confident about like, AI is not going to take my job though. Like they're yeah. still putting the, in the sun in the wrong place. Yeah, like, and they're still adding in. Yeah, they're still adding in materials and like all the rocks and the grass and everything. So hopefully there will be just like a sun and you can just yeah, paint just it move it around or something. Cool. So we've got a comment, a very nice comment. FX Home team just getting better and greater. This is excellent. Um, oh. Quality is better now. Quality is better. Everyone's better. Seven twenty p. Yeah, that's what it is. That's all you need. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll look into why ten eighty p was crashing our entire network um, next week. It's just too much. We do have like two computers, 
three computers. Yeah, and Tom's sharing iPad. the screens. Um, everyone upstairs is still working while we goof off down here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's gl glad, glad that it's looking better. Got about 50 people at the moment on the live oh, channel, wow. which is cool. So um, we're about 10 minutes in. Should we start creating stuff? Yeah, I think so. Let's I'm ready. It. Cool. So uh, sky replacement um, AI stuff. I did ask about whether you have experience with Canvas. Um, we're going to be diving into HitFilm as well. Have you ever done a sky replacement visual effect? Before? I haven't. I haven't done a lot of visual effects stuff. I've obviously used the compositing in HitFilm, but yeah. for more more sort of like basic-y kind of mm -hmm. things. Not. Cool. I more like to use them as like little folders on my timelines right. to keep things organized. I'm not a visual effects artist. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we'll take it. We'll take it slow. We do have an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, we'll go through it. We'll experiment, have fun, make mistakes, and it'll all be good. Yeah, it's going to cool. be fun. Excited. All right, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is uh, open NVIDIA Canvas. So uh, like I said, Louisa's got her laptop. I've got mine. So we're both going to open that up. Yeah. And hopefully it will let us because we are running a lot of stuff yeah. alongside these, it. These poor laptops, honestly. <laughs> the fans are probably going to kick up yeah. as well. So if you hear um, a wind tunnel, that's actually our fans. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, let's go ahead and open up Canvas. And then what we're going to do is so that is louisa's screen it says ollie's screen because it's ollie's laptop but um oh. yeah so uh, you <laughs> Probably guys should have changed that one yeah i don't think you i turned off the display name so i think it's i think it's fine um cool so nvidia canvas we did talk about it two weeks ago um but a basic overview real quick basically you have 20 materials in the top right here that you can choose from you paint the scene on the left and then it creates a realistic environment um using ai and the way they did that was they fed the computer millions and millions of images of environments of rocks, grass, dirt, everything. And eventually the computer is able to say, okay, I can do that myself from nothing. So you got to give it a bit of a, a push in the right direction. You have to say the grass is here, the mountains are here, all that stuff. And it will eventually create something pretty cool. Okay. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is usually, let's think about the shot, actually. Thinking about the shot, it had... The sun was on the left side, and I knew that doing the original composite. So we'll go through the different variations, the different styles and stuff, but we generally want to keep the light source on the left. We can't control that at the moment. We can only sort of randomly generate stuff, but that is something to keep in mind uh, going forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is select a material like, let me see, just probably grass, I think. Okay, grass. Grass. Uh, you can use the brush tool. You can use the line tool, which is right under it. Um, but you kind of just want to draw a line across the center. Okay, I can do that. Um, because this is going to be the horizon in the yes. in the final composite. This is great because I don't have a mouse, so I'm using right. the little trackpad. So yeah. do you have to color it in? Yes, that definitely okay. helps because um, it's telling Nvidia that it exists uh, below okay. the line. So oh, I've... oh, it's already made like a little a little like sunset going yes. on on my screen. Yes, yeah? so that's kind of like the first uh, instance style variation of of the image. So in this case, that works. Um, for our final composite, it probably won't because the sun wasn't in the shot. And that's mm. something we want to pay attention to. I just found the fill tool. I feel like an artist. <laughs> cool. So <laughs> okay. um, on the right, we do have the sort of thumbnails for different variations. So you can okay. click on those and you can generate different lighting, different day and night, um, different colors and textures and all kinds of stuff. Okay. So we're going to want to find one that works. And I know I said I was going to use the brush, but I'm actually going to use the line tool just so I can get a definite straight line here. I don't have a straight line. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Should I redo it? Um, you can just do it on top and, and fill the rest in, okay. like yeah. fill it above. It's going to get quite high. Yeah, high that's all right. The thing about right. um, okay, straight line. This is going to output a 1024 by 1024 image, so it's really not that big. Um, one thing to keep in mind when we do mountains or something uh, in the distance, they should be quite small because when we put it in hit film, it's gonna, it's gonna mm. blow it up and scale it up and it's gonna be too big very easily. Okay. Status check, Tom. Yeah, no, it seems to be okay right now. We've been fiddling around uh, over here, but uh, let us know if anything drops. Cool. cool. Cool, so I can't actually see Louise's screen and if I switch, it'll show up on <sighs> your guys' thing. So... Gonna, I, I can describe it to you. It's, yeah. it's some grass with some blue sky. Cool, all right. Cool. It's cool. like, there's like, here we are. Cool. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is add in some mountains. So okay. in the top uh, row here, yeah. the fourth one from the left is a mountains one. I would recommend creating a new layer because you can uh, control oh. 
layers. Yeah, this, is, this is very, oh, I've just added way too many layers. I'm excited, right? So, so yeah, you, you just add one and then okay. you can draw the mountains on that. And then you could hide them without affecting like the grass yeah. or anything like that. So, so just draw some mountains. Just draw in. some mountains. I'm try and fill draw. them in like you did with the grass and just see what NVIDIA does. Okay. It should be all right. Uh, I'll do mine here. Some good art skills I've got going on here. The shape of the mountains, it will it will take it quite literally. So if you do a shape that doesn't look like a mountain. Okay, well mine are quite pointy. This is gonna be interesting when <laughs> I when I click off for a second. Yeah, it'll do it. Oh, best. oh that's made something very interesting. Don't know if you can show the, the that's what that's what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna undo that and do a little bit more of a um a little bit more of a kind of oh, I'm not gonna do anything apparently. More, <laughs> more like that. There we go. Cool, but yeah, like I said, keep them uh, quite quite small as well because it, oh, it will. That looks like a cloud. Yeah, so if you if you draw um, a stroke and there is space of the sky between it, oh like okay, it so it, it gets it gets confused. Yeah, it it if basically thinks that, it thinks that is farther away, so it's adding like fog and stuff to sort okay. of compensate for that. Um, okay, we kind of we kind of got some mountains cool. coming along okay, here. Cool. Um, I'm gonna add. There's. I'm gonna add one more layer. Actually, I'll okay. probably add several, but I'm just going to go to the next step, forest. forest. And there is a, where is it? Yeah, forest. So it's the third row farthest on the right side. Ah, yes. Yeah, okay. And I'm just going to add a line of trees along that sort of ridge line. Okay. And let's see what that does. I can try and do the same. I think I might make my mountains a bit bigger, so I'll just go back and add in uh some stuff there my laptop's kicking up yeah i can begin to hear the whoosh going on right okay cool and i'm going to cycle through some of the variations as well because i want to find something that matches the lighting scenario that's in the actual plate so the sun can't be in the sky because it's not in the in the actual plate um so you want one without Without the sky, ideally the sun should be on the left side, and you could you should you could kind of you want to be able to tell that it's on the left, but not necessarily be entirely in frame. Otherwise, it won't match the footage. Okay. And we'll do some of the compositing as well, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But um, we just scroll through okay, here. Yeah, I think this is probably the closest to it being on the left. That one. Yeah. Louisa, I'm showing your screen. You're now. showing my screen. Yeah. This is my piece of art. <laughs> it um, it looks realistic if you take a step back, but if you start like looking in closely, you can kind of tell that it's like been put together. I the have, more, yeah, go ahead. I have a question from Phil. Yeah. Uh, can we also paint out the sun after we finish creating the background plate, or does the light affect the rest of the scene too much? Depends on the scene, but I would, my initial sort of gut reaction is that it would be too obvious that the sun is in the wrong direction. We are very good as people at figuring out where the light's coming from subconsciously. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why sometimes visual effects that you see in movies don't look great is because we know something's wrong. A lot of time it's the light. It's either too soft or too hard, the wrong direction. Um, we're very good at spotting that the light is wrong because it, it, it's our entire world. That's how we, how we put things together. Um, so give it a shot. <laughs> if, you, if you come up with something good, let us know. And uh, I'd be interested to see it. But you could paint stuff out for sure. Um, you could use Emerge. You could use, probably you could use HitFilm as well. Um, but that is, that is an option. Give it a try. I've seen the flower tool and got really excited. So I'm going to put some flowers in the <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Feel free to uh, add more layers and add stuff in. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a clouds layer because my sky is very blue at the moment. My sky is very blue too, but I've just been completely enthralled by the flowers. So I'm going to make my sky. Oh, wow. Really interesting. Getting yeah. some beautiful meadows going on. So I'm I need to stop. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> right. Let's put, put some clouds some, in. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to paint some fluffy clouds up here. Okay, and then maybe one over here. Big little cloud. Oh. Give him a give him a friend as well. Make a couple. Make as many as you like. This is so much harder with the trackpad. <laughs> it's, it's 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 fine. It's just a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, it's okay. Nobody canvas is fixing it. Let's check it. <laughs> my my <laughs> clouds aren't quite as fluffy looking, but they I think they're coming out all right. 
Uh, remember that in the in the uh, shot, we're going to be comping only the top half. So the bottom half of the image. That's all matter. those flowers. Yes. Oh, <laughs> can I put some flowers in the sky now? <laughs> you can you can you can try and see what happens. Actually, I kind of want to say it's not going to. I'm going to put some in the clouds and just say yes. Just do see. It. It's not going to know what to do. It's going to have a. Oh wow. <laughs> abstract. Uh, yeah, that's a bit abstract. Interesting. I'm just gonna undo that. And pretend that never happened. Right. <laughs> okay. Cool. But yeah, once you add some more stuff in, feel free to go back and do the variations as well, because it will adapt and it will sort of uh, try to figure out what it is you're going for. Oh yeah, I see. Um, so let me just. Oh, this one's this one's got some nice and moody moody lighting going on in it. Clouds look like it's gonna rain that one oh i like the sunset ones but i'm guessing that they yeah. won't work for the because of the, the sun in it i'm guessing that would not work the, for the sky replacement. so if we look at the plate um let me let me see if i can pull that up real quick if we look at the plate again um we can see uh that the sun is on the left definitely it's a it's a soft lighting on the guy um so it's sort of hitting his his shoulder and his head and everything but it's not a very sharp light so i think I think you could get away a bit with if the sun was in the in the shot or if it was a sunset or whatever. I think you could sort of fake it. I think you'd get away with it okay. a little bit. Um, if there had been a direct hard source in that footage, you got to stick with it. You got to stick. The sun is there. Like you commit. We can see yeah. it. Yes. And that's one of the things that you think about on set as well. It's like, are we comping in any? Do we know what the background is? In which case we have to hide the sun a little bit. Or is it definitely going to be, you know, on the left side, which in which case we can just be like, just film it as it is. Um, but yeah, I can see yours as well, looking cool. Yeah, yeah that's a it, that that That'd variation much, always yeah. has some good colors in it uh, with the blues and the yeah. sunsets and everything. It's cool. very pretty, but probably a bit much for a beginner. So I'm gonna try and find one that feels a little bit more. I'm just gonna a little look bit at more. This this feels like one feels a bit more like safe, I guess. Yeah, some mountains, some clouds. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep it simple. Yeah, <laughs> cool. I think I'm gonna go with. Maybe I kind of want something with some color, but the sun is on the wrong side in that one. Your one looks much more cinematic. Wow. <laughs> um, note to self, we should get a monitor. Because right oh, now yeah. I'm, I'm, looking, at, yeah, I'm looking across the room to see what, what Louise looks like, like. We should get a, looking across, yeah. get a TV or something right here. Um, we'll cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think I might go with this one, actually. It's, uh, it's inexact where the sun is. If I had to guess, the sunset is on the left, which is matching our That's about right. Um, our plate. So I think I might go with that one. It's got some cool colors as well, so we'll try and composite those in and make it look all in one scene. I do want to adjust the clouds, though. I think it needs more cinematic clouds. Any questions about NVIDIA Canvas coming in, Tom? Uh, no, no questions at the moment. Uh, oh, hang on. Here's one. Does the software allow you to add different weather effects, e.g. rain thunder? No. Not at the moment. Oh, I got excited. I was going to go have a look. Well, there's an option for there, snow there. There is snow. Yes, there is so snow. So what happens if I click on snow? Can I completely change the time of year by just kind of... Apparently not. I don't really know what that did, but it didn't look like snow to me. The answer is no. So yes, it does has, uh, have snow. It doesn't have rain. No lightning. You can't control the sun. Um... It's mostly like physical objects, like rocks and flowers and grass and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, they did add, I think it was four or five materials in the latest update, so they are still adding stuff in. Um, so maybe in the future at some point, that would be that would be cool. That would be cool. There is a fog, fog one as well though. A bit of atmosphere, if I can get it in the right spot. This one's a bit finicky, the fog. Oh, I see one that says stone wall, I think I might. Might put a little stone wall in mine. I think this, what I just did works. I've added in fog and it put the sunset between the mountains. If I if I use this but flip it, the sun will be on the left side. I think that could potentially work. Um, I still want to adjust my clouds. They're still not. That's a solid no on the stone wall front. That does not <laughs> look good. Uh, we, have, we have another question. Sorry yes. if I missed oh. it, but uh, can you move the sun after? Or is it always in the middle? It is. It's not always in the middle, but it it trying to it tries to guess the best spot for it. Can um, I see if I can put it somewhere weird? Yes. What, what should I put in the scene to try and um? 
try and destroy well, it. And that's the thing. The there's, there's not really anything. Some of that there. Is it gonna? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> there's not really anything to influence it. Kind of. Yeah. Just it just seems to be random. It. I'm just trying to see if I can make it do something wrong. Yeah. Sort of prove prove a point. <laughs> no, it's still kind of playing along. It's this one, mud. Are there any other tools <laughs> similar to Nvidia Canvas? Kind. It depends on. Um, what you're wanting to do. So two weeks ago, we, we also played with Midjourney and Dolly. Um, and those could generate environments, but this one is a lot more painterly in its sort of technique. And it's like, I want a rock here. I want a mountain here. Um, Midjourney and Dolly sort of generate the whole image and then you just kind of, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. um, as far as environments and stuff, this is sort of the first one that I've played with. So I don't know if there are any others. If there are, and you guys know, let us know. I would love so to play can, around so with some can. more. This one I really like because it's just very... It's fun. Like it's you just paint in paint. Louisa loves paint. I love I love paint. <laughs> I know I should use a merge more because it's it's our software and it's fantastic. But you just can't beat the crayon tool in paint. Sometimes <laughs> we'll be like this thumbnail looks great. What'd you make it in paint? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Get the job done. It's all good. Oh yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just adjusting some of the fog in mine. And then I think I'll probably call it there because, like I said, it's only the top half of the image that we're going to be compositing. Yeah, I'm just um, having a little play around with some of my mountains and grass and stuff just right on the bit that will be seen. Maybe adding a few, seeing if I can add some trees in it. Question. Yes. Well, what would happen if you drew a T-Rex? Well, there's only one way to find out now, isn't there? How do I turn off all of my other layers so I can just start There's again? There's an eye icon. Eyeball. Okay, yeah, I see. Right, I will draw a T-Rex for you. What what material would you like the T-Rex to be in? <laughs> give yes. it a moment. Give it a moment. What's what's like... the verdict? T-Rex um, is in skies, yeah. clouds. Clouds clouds might work. Clouds grass. could grass. grass. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this is going to really test my ability to remember what a T-Rex looks like. Right, like that. Let's fill him in. Oh, oh, this is already starting to look cursed. Okay, so let's give him his little arms and some legs. <laughs> and is there? There's another shade of green possibly that I could use here to make some like little. Yeah. This is great. This this is definitely what the tutorial was supposed the, uh, to be. <laughs> the AI is just like I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. We've got to we've got to bring a bit of chaos in here. I'm just going for colors now, by the way, to make the shape. There we go. Let's give him some teeth. There's your T-Rex. <laughs> See, it's just placing the sun like wherever. It's just like it I, really, it I really. To be fair. No this this was a challenge for mm. it but i do actually want to save this because i quite like quite like <laughs> it so i might keep that layer for later anyway back to what we were supposed to do <laughs> we'll find out that your all your uh previous paintings have been deleted oh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we've got them all saved my yeah. masterpiece is, is still there cool all right so shall we uh, export yes. what time is it six half four thirty <gasps> time flies yeah what time do we start Four. 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 Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. So I'm guessing it's just the save yeah, the file button. The T -Rex and then uh, Matt. <laughs> Matt. <sells it>. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll sell them later. Uh, so yeah, to export in NVIDIA Canvas, come up to the top taskbar. There's an export button, the fourth one from the left. And then it'll just output a, you have Aha, to change it to PNG. Export. And rather than PSD, change it to yeah, PNG. PNG. I'm just going to save it to my downloads. Okay. Cool. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and close that. Yep. Um, I'll save it real quick, just in case. Oh yeah, I need to save it because now I need to um, sell my dyno. <laughs> cool. I'm going to take my screen off for a second while we open up Hit film. Okay. Fans are kicking up. Oh, here it comes. I just don't think laptops can edit video as well as a as like a, a desktop. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so small. There's nowhere yeah. for like the heat to go. Yeah. Right. I need to open the project. Don't yeah. I? So if you want to go ahead and open up the man in field. Okay. I think it has live streaming. The, yeah. Live streaming the title. 
Um, I'm just going to set up my window, set up my workspace. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to have all my workspace on this yeah. laptop. I'm like, oh. I'll just go into compositing. I think I like editing. So, I mean, we are compositing. Maybe I should go for compositing. I think editing would give you the trimmer, which um, we probably don't need. Okay. Oh, this is different. I've never used the compositor one before. I normally just composite in the editor mm -hmm. workspace. Yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> okay. I like it. Cool. All right. Um... statement of, I have the same laptop and it sounds like I'm rendering inside a helicopter. That's pretty There we it. go. Yeah. yeah. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Phil asks, any color, any consideration for color grading when looking at variations? Yes. Because some, sometimes the, um, when it puts the sun in a specific spot, it'll clip the highlights, which means it's going to appear white. We can't get that back in HitFilm. There's nothing we can do. So I wouldn't use that. I would, I would discard it and try and find a different one. Um, I'm, I am looking at the color of the canvas and just seeing if, basically I'm asking myself, can it be tweaked to fit my plate? Um, is there sort of a, a, a color scheme throughout? Is there, are there any weird colors that I might have to fix? Um, so yeah, definitely I'm looking at color grading and considering that before I export. Um, cool, so that is Louisa's screen. Let me go ahead and do mine as well. Oh, Lord. Loading. <laughs> cool. So, uh, Louise, if we go into the, let's just start in the, in the one unedited. So it's number one, two, three, yeah. four. Let's just start number one. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is the shot like you guys have seen before. Um, and the first thing we have to do is motion track this. Okay. We're going to skip it because it's tedious. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will explain what that is and why we need to do it. And the process that I took to do the original. Uh, final shot. So motion tracking, you can see that this shot is moving, right? So it's a it's a very slow camera movement, but it is moving. If we stuck the sky in there and just let it play, it wouldn't follow the movement of the camera. For visual effects, that is absolutely necessary. So we need a way to sort of replicate this motion and apply it to our new canvas. So what I did in the original sequence was I used the, the uh, Foundry camera tracker. So there are a couple different ways to motion track in HitFilm. You can do a point tracker, you can do Mocha, you can do 3D um, tracking with Foundry. I ended up going with Foundry because it was the best result out of all of them. And that's kind of really what is it is, is like which will get me the best, the most sticky result, make it look like it's stuck on the screen. Um, because with the sky, any sort of slippage, any sort of sliding around, you're going to be able to tell. Yeah. Um, and I had that a few times with mine where it was like, that's not quite right. So. Um, Camera tracker works. Uh, if I go into unedited again, I'll just demo like a frame of it rather than making you sit through the whole thing. <laughs> camera tracker has a lot of settings. We won't go through them all. If you watch our tutorial by Zach Allen from a couple months ago, he goes through most of them and he goes through the best practices and all that stuff. The very simple way to do it is you click track features and it does it automatically. Um, so it's going to go through and it's going to detect dozens of points in your screen. It's going to figure out how they move. It's going to figure out which points are far away, which are very close to the camera, and it's going to build a camera based on that. Um, so like I said, I'll cancel that because it's kicking up the fans. <laughs> but when you're done with the camera tracker, what you'll have is composite shot number two, which is... So that automatically makes the composite shot when you do that. No, so it, it creates the camera. In, creates this, the camera. in this instance, I've split out the composite shots into like the unedited version, it's been tracked, it's been rotoed so that we can quickly okay. jump from one so to you've the like other. you've like copied and pasted them exactly. and taken the steps off, okay. Yes, all okay. Foundry camera tracker will do is create a camera, yeah. uh, okay. which we have here. So once you're done, it'll basically look like this, these sort of layers here with, with the video itself, the 3D camera, and then we also have a camera sky track. So this point is stuck to the sky right here. Um, it's locked at the moment, so if you unlock it, uh, it's number four, but I think it's just my screen showed at the moment. So that's, we don't need to switch between those two. Um, we're going to use this point to uh, parent our new sky to our footage. So I think we do that in this one, trying to BG new comp. Yeah. So go ahead and import your new sky, your image into the media panel. 
and bring it into this comp. Um, Straight onto the top of everything? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And this sky track is a 3D point. So we need to sort of put it in the same spot as that point. So what I'm going to do is uh, make this field background a 3D plane rather than 2D. And it's going to disappear because it's not in the field of view at the moment. Um, but what I'm going to do is parent field to new sky track. And I'll reset it. And that hopefully should put it in the same spot as the point. And you reset it. What was what was that? So that was right click and then reset. But just it has on the to whole be, thing. Yeah. And it should be parented to the point yes. first. Ah, now I see. Cool. So now you can unparent it from that uh, from that point. So we, back to none. Yes, because we don't need that anymore. So now if you scroll through, it should move uh, in the same way as the camera did. Cool. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. yes, we're good. Live demos. What it is upside down. It what, is. what made it go upside down? So basically, um, the camera doesn't know what is up and down and what is right and wrong and left and right. No, it does kind of know left and right, but it's sort of guessing what the camera is doing. And in some cases like this, it doesn't know that upside down is wrong. But the point is sticking to the sky, and that's pretty much all we need. So we're mm -hmm. gonna we're gonna go with that. We can just rotate the the NVIDIA canvas image easily. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not too much of a concern. So I'll go to controls and I'll rotate the image so that it's the right way up. Okay. You can use the, or the orientation controls or the rotation controls, but I'm just going to put it sort of in the right spot. I'm going to scale it up. And put it uh, in the general direction of, of where it should be. And this is where the sort of a very small image comes into play, like the edges are visible very quickly. Yeah, should I scale it in to sort yeah, of? Yeah, just go ahead and hit the the, the regular match. scale. And this is where it's like the mountains should have been smaller than they actually are. Okay, this yeah, this is when I'm going to discover my mountains are, are huge. Big, yeah, but that okay. is the good thing. I made that same mistake when I did um, when I did it the first time around, and that's it's very easy to just go in and erase the mountains, draw them smaller, and then that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, yeah, I think my mountains might need to be a bit smaller. That's all right. Hi. We can go back. We can edit stuff. It's all good. Any questions coming in, Tom? Not at the moment, but let's check in on Louisa's screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay, so I got, okay. I got, I got them on here. Mm -hmm. um, I think at some point it flipped. Okay. It flipped horizontally, and the mountains on the other side now. Okay. So I don't know when that <laughs> happened. Actually, I've only yeah. just noticed. <laughs> so I think you could go in and rotate the Y rotation and just flip uh, it around. That's probably what it is. Yeah, Let's do that. You yeah, can also okay. do the scale if that doesn't work, but yeah, that worked. Cool. Okay. That's... So yeah, we'll get those get those in the right spot. Let's have a little look at what we're working with. Yeah, I still think they are probably a little bit too big. That's taking up like the whole screen. So this would take some tweaking, and it did for me in the in the compositing stage of like putting it in exactly the right spot, getting the mountains the right size. Um, and I'm removing that from this tutorial because otherwise we're going to be here for like half an hour to <laughs> fiddle with it. So. What I think you can do, hopefully this will work. If you go into the third composite shot, so mm -hmm. it's called three tracked and background no comp. I think Ooh. you should be able to just, so you can see that this is the original, the, the real background. And I've done the roto, I've done the track and it's in the right spot. It's masked everything, skipping over that again. But we want obviously our, our images in there. So hopefully this works again. <laughs> If you go to the media panel okay. and select your new canvas image. Yes. And you click and drag and hold alt. Oh, this is going to test me and my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my laptop. OK, I think I've got that. And place okay. it over the layer that says matte painting in the media panel. So it should be like right below it or yeah, very so close just, to it. Just drag it on top of it. Yes. Hold alt. And it should replace it. Something happened. Maybe I didn't have the buttons held right because I haven't got a mouse. I've got to like yeah. So Alt and click and drag it on and let go. 
Hmm. Ollie probably remapped his keys or something. He, he might have done. <laughs> it worked on mine. Aha, there we go. There we no, it worked. Cool. Okay. It's fine. It was just, I can't click buttons cool. apparently. No worries. So yeah, in this case, we've, um, we've just swapped it out. Like mm -hmm. I did the comp and I did the tracking and the masking yeah. and everything. So now we're just, we put our images in there without having to do all that stuff. So we did get a question about how I did the roto. So I'll just cover that real quick. Um, if I go into, there's a separate, you don't have to do this, Louisa, because it's, um, I'm just going to watch. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, let me turn, let me turn these off one by one and we'll start with the head here. So what I did was I created a, what's called a mat. And this is a luminance mat because it's black and white. Um, and what I did was I had my footage and I said, okay, the problem with this is that the guy is obviously, she should be in front of this guy, right? In front of this new background. So we got to put the guy in front. To do that, we have to tell HitFilm what is and what should be in front. So what I have to do is I isolate this portion of the guy. And I was actually able to use a luminance key. So this will key out anything that is, it keys it out based on brightness. So it'll key out the, no, actually this is the darkest, the darkest things first. Um, and then as you go, it'll be uh, more and more keyed out. I was able to get a pretty good key on that without having to do any masking. Um, and I know you did masking for your, uh, what was the term for it? It wasn't a montage, but it was the snapshot sort of. Oh, the cutout, the, the cutout, cutout, cutout thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw her masking leaves. And I was See, like, this is the thing, because I did your thing with the luminance key thing, yeah. and it just didn't look right. Yeah. Because it sometimes, looked too perfect, and it was cutting it stuff work, out. Yeah. I liked the fact that it kind of looked like I'd, I'd gone mm -hmm. wrong some yeah. places. like it, Sort of like a paper, yeah. like if you yeah. were with scissors or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have experience, <laughs> yeah. a little bit of experience with masking. It can be tedious, and it can be oh, take yeah. quite a while. But with this luminance key, I was able to get his head and sort of top of his shoulders isolated very quickly, which is cool. So I'll fill that with black um, because I'm, I'm telling HitFilm, don't put the NVIDIA canvas image in this area where it's black. Um, and now we have the issue of we have to do his shoulders as well. So if I go back to the comp, we've got him in front. Obviously, we need the rest of them. Um, there was an issue where... The ground, I got the ground in, so that looks good there. I got the head in, but there was a piece of it where it wasn't covered. And I tried to do a luminance key similar to before, but because he's, uh, it's next to grass, it was the same shade, it was getting keyed out. And sometimes you just have to do things manually. So for that portion, I used Mocha Hit Film. Uh, so Mocha Hit Film is a it's not, it's technically it's a plugin because we didn't make it, but it is included in HitFilm Pro um, and it allows for motion tracking and masking. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just tracking a shape and I'm just tracing it, tracing around um, his shoulders, his back here, the parts that I want to keep in the footage. So once I have that, I've got what's called a mat. White, I want the image to show through. Black, I do not. Um, and you can see it's motion tracked. It moves as well as similar to the video. And that will sort of uh, inform where the sky should be. So now we have this. Got our image tracked in. Got our, our guy masked out to be in front. Now the fun part is comping them together. So let me see. Should we go into the fourth one or no. not? Let me just see. Fourth one is the final comp. Um, we can probably just stay in this third one here. The fourth one is the sort of final, final video that I made last week um cool just checking any comments tom we good yeah well first off you've blown the minds of a couple of people uh <laughs> not realizing that you can replace files and hit them right. yeah well done yeah yeah <laughs> i thought I of that i thought of that like 10 minutes ago <laughs> we were going through it and i was like crap how do we get our images without having to place them all and do all this stuff again and continue on i was like i can just replace them i've always done it as like a right click thing because you can do it like that i didn't realize like you could just uh, yeah 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 i didn't realize that you could um replace. You could just yeah. use a keyboard shortcut yeah and it'll, it'll it'll replace all instances in the editor and the comp uh everything which is very handy so yeah that's good I'm glad, uh, glad i got it we also have another question can you export at different sizes from nvidia no not at the moment uh, it's limited to 1024 by 1024, so it's a square. It's not ideal. 
Um, maybe in the future, it also might be a limitation of the AI itself. Like it can only generate that size, like for mid journey, for example, um, you have to pay to export, I think like 4k or, or get higher resolutions. Um, so it might be a limitation of that basically not at the moment, hopefully mm -hmm. in the future at some point, because it would be very handy for, if you had a 4k shot, um, you don't want to be using a, a 1000 by 1000 image because that's very yeah. small and it's not going to work. Wouldn't look very realistic if it's like, yeah, it'll get very crunchy. Very quickly. Yeah. Even right here now it's, it's compared to the footage of the guy, it is kind of low res, not sure yeah. how it comes through on the stream, but, um, yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, and we have one more as well. Uh, I think that creating the map will be the trickiest part of the process. It's the least fun part. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this entire comp took me uh, three hours. So I came in to work a little before nine and then I had it, I found the footage and I had it finished by lunchtime at 12. Um, the roto wasn't that hard to do. It was just kind of tedious because it, it wasn't, it wasn't tracking. Mocha is very good at tracking stuff. Um, that's moving. So like it would have done like 50% of the work, but you can see his shirt is moving throughout the thing. And it was getting confused because the ripples are creating new, new textures and everything. And it just wasn't, I did have to do it manually. Um, the luminance key worked really well, which I'm happy with. Uh, but the Roto wasn't, didn't take up that too much, that much time, but it wasn't, I just wanted to get to the comp, which is yeah. why I've done that here. Get to the fun stuff. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So we've got Matt painting. We've got our guy in front. Are there any more questions? Tom? I just wanted to. Not at this time, but cool. please do let us know. Yes. Cool. So we've got um, we've got stuff in. Now it's comping time. Unless you want to go back and change the mountains, we can do that as well. Depends I think on how much it bugs you. I might just commit to them at this okay. point. I think because I could be going in and out all day okay. playing around with them, but we'll just we'll commit. Cool. Okay. So the first thing, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say before you start, can we check in on Louisa's screen? Yeah, yeah, no, so yeah. Let's take a look. Is, what do you got? Look at that. <laughs> is 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 it's there? Cool. It's something. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, silence. Let's cut back to <laughs> let's cut back to Javaz, which is much better. <laughs> you can't take any blame for it. It's an AI generated uh, image, so it's like the AI did it. Um, okay, yeah, I can. Yeah, the AI <laughs> did it. I'm gonna say that at the end, even after the compositing. Be like, no, it's bad I, because the AI did it. <laughs> The excuse falls flat at that point, but yeah, we'll uh, yeah. let's see. I did want to actually flip my image because the sun is currently on the right side. Um, so I'll just do that in the scale property instead of flipping the rotation. Um, so that's still not as far left as I would actually like. Um, ideally, it would be somewhere over here, but obviously we run out of image at that point. So I'm just going to stick with it because it is what it is. And just go and, commit. Yeah, exactly. That's the theme. That's the theme. We got to commit. We're on a live stream. Cool. So uh, with compositing, the first thing I usually do is color match the two plates as best as I can. So we have the uh, plate of the guy and the plate of the background, which is just an image. Um, to do that, if I take off the painting, looking at the footage of this guy, it's very flat. And that was probably because it was shot in like log. Um, so our plates will differ because you have a different image. But um, I'm going to use a curves effect first. So I'm going to add a curves effect onto the video of the guy. Okay. It's always a good place to start the curve. Yeah, I use it all the time. And you can stack them as well. So like if you make a bunch of adjustments and you want to start new, just add another curves effect um, and go from there. So with this curve, um, what I'm going to do is just add, add in some contrast. So I'll drag the lower left side down and the right side up just a little bit. Um, and this is going to make it a little bit darker, but it's going to make it look a bit more normal as well. Um, and actually, I did turn off my canvas image, but I'm just going to actually turn it back on so I can get an idea of how bright things are. Mine's a little easier to match because I've yeah, got did, like a blue sky think, yeah. and like you, you're trying to match to like a sunset. Yeah, I did think yours looked closer. Um, yeah, that's kind of why I picked this one. <laughs> so I'll just... Uh, Basically, what I'm doing here is just matching contrast levels. I'm looking at the two plates, and I'm thinking, do they look like they belong in the same sort of world? Okay. Um, there are you could technically match like black levels and white levels and stuff, but since we're on a live stream, I'm just going to do it by eye. Uh, so I'm matching. If this were a real plate with the NVIDIA canvas image, 
how bright would this guy be? And I'm guessing. Um, so here's before and here's after. So it's a little bit darker. Um, once I've got that dialed in, I will duplicate the curve and reset it. So you can right click and duplicate, right click, reset. And I'm gonna do some of the color as well. So we've got, I've got a sunset image and this is where our, our paths will split. But I have a lot of purple, a lot of orange, a little bit of yellow in mind. So I'm gonna go through the different channels in the curve. So red, green, and blue, and just mess with them until my image matches uh, or my video matches the image. So maybe I'll boost the reds a little bit. And if I go into the green channel, let's just see. Sometimes you just, you don't know exactly what it's going to do. You just play around yeah. and just try and get it to match. That's basically system. how I color grade, to be fair. Just <laughs> kind of like put effects on, wiggle them around, and then you can see what parts that they yeah. start to affect. Yeah. And then you can get things. Cool. Going. So let's see. That's there. I've got a question. Would it make sense to try and make multiple similar canvas pieces and then try and build a larger matte painting to use as background? Yes. I don't know how well they'd link together, though, because canvas wouldn't know that you're trying to, like, extend the background. And it wouldn't know, like, if you had a mountain going along the right side and you start a new image, it's not going to, I mean, you could paint a mountain, but it's not going to know that they should be the same mountain. Yeah. So they might not be too seamless. You could try it because you could combine the 1024 images and get something bigger. Um, but I have no guarantee with how that would work out. Give it a try. I think it'd take quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to keep going in and editing things yeah. to get them like perfect. Remove the seams as well. Um, yeah. Between because you got four or four sides and taking out the difference between all the images. Um, so I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I would say you, it, would it would require some manual fixing. Cool. So I've got my, I think I've got my video matched to my image in terms of the color. You can see the difference uh, here. So that's before and that's after. Boosting the reds, lowering the greens a little bit, boosting the highlights, and then lowering the blues, I think. Or no, raising the blues. It's barely noticeable. I very rarely raise the blue channel because it results in this ugly <laughs> violet. Um, I'll probably mitigate that going forward, but I have added it in a little bit here. Um, how's Louise doing? Because I can't see her. Screen. I didn't really but... need to add a lot to mine because it was already green. So I just kind of played around cool. with the curve until I thought it looked about right. Cool. Tried to put some green in, turned them into Shrek, put it back very quickly and no yeah. one noticed. No one knew it, yeah. Until now. Until now. <laughs> cool. So after you unify the two plates, you then sort of grade it as a whole. So now you consider it one image um, and you grade the whole thing as if it were a single image, a single video that you captured. On mine, I wonder if I can fix that real quick. So on mine, you can see that in the border of where the guy's footage ends and where the image begins, the grass gets a lot brighter right here. Um, I wonder if I can fix that real quick. Let's see, map painting. Um, I would I would probably edit the matte painting rather than the guy himself. So I'm gonna try. Let's try saturation, hue, saturation, and lightness. This splits out the colors into different channels: red, yellow, green, cyan, blue. I wonder if I can go into the green channel and maybe take that down. It might be considered yellow. Depends on the clip. Yeah, so it's considered yellow there, but it is also affecting the sunset. So I can get it pretty close. Something like maybe that's too much. That's close. Um, take down the saturation a bit more. Maybe 85, maybe. It's the wrong hue. Shift it. Negative four, negative nine. So that's close. Here's without the effect and with it. But as you can see, it is affecting the sunset quite a bit, which is not good. So to fix that, I would spend more time on it. But we don't have that <laughs> today. We're we just to have to commit. Yeah, I, once again, we'll just have to commit. Um, so if, if this were uh, an outside project, I would probably 
apply this hue saturation effect to a grade layer rather than the image itself. Uh, put that below the guy and then mask out the grade. I said I wasn't going to do it. I'm You're doing still, it. Still doing it anyway. Um, it's not going to it's not going to be in the mask the whole time, which is where the keyframing would come in, because it would need to follow the grass the whole time. I'm just going to do like fifty. So yeah, you can see it, the the mask is existing in this area, but once the camera starts moving, it's gonna yeah by the end of it, it does fall out of it. But um, that's good enough. So <laughs> I'll just rename this grass fix. Very important to name your layers as you go. I'm very guilty of not doing <laughs> that. You'll probably notice that in the latest tutorial did, that's yeah. going out the 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 cutout masking effect one i do have them all just named like image zero five yeah. zero composite shot which was actually horrendous when i tried to go back to them yeah. but yeah that's my um my my bad thing that i do with it's edits okay. i just it's okay we'll work on it yeah um so let's go ahead and create a a grade layer at the top this will be the sort of overall grade um so yeah just new layer grade and then you can name it whatever you want i believe it called new grade you in my case <laughs> My Twitch. Yeah. Um, so onto this, I'm going to add another curves effect. Curves I keep coming back to all the time because it's just very intuitive and handy way to color stuff. Um, and this one, this step, this step in the compositing process is subjective. You have a different image to me. Um, I have a more sunset image. You have a more daylight, daylight one. And our styles are different. It's raining. It's raining. It was raining real bad a minute ago when you were talking. Oh. It's sucks so british now <laughs> talking about the weather um our styles also sort of are different like you, we could have the same image and color grade it two different ways because it becomes a subjective yeah what looks good to you what looks good to me sort of thing yeah so at this point you know go crazy yeah um use I'm, the curves you use, use the hue saturation and lightness uh, i'm gonna turn my highlights all the way down like tom hates <laughs> <laughs> do you make them a dull gray and just do you, do no, you no, I like I bring everything else up and I play with the saturation, but I just always like it when you just take the highlights and you just bring them all the way down. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it makes skies look nice. I'll need to see an example of this. <laughs> I might, you might have two versus one against you right now. Um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so oh. I'm playing with my curves effect. Can get the sky a bit brighter. Bill says that's your personal touch. Yeah. <laughs> Ruining things. My personal touch. <laughs> Um, that's not really working on this image. Let's see, I might. Um, it's hard to grade a sunset, to be honest, because you want it to look the best it can, but you also want it to be natural. And it, it's very easy to sort of mess that up. Um, so again, I would spend more time on it. But I'm sort of just adding in. Because I've got the sun in mind, I'm also going to add a glow effect just to soften the overall sort of brightness and, and make the fall off a bit nicer. So I'll increase the threshold so that it's only on the sky, increase the radius quite a bit more, and then decrease the intensity. This will create a soft sunset kind of glow. Too much. Two. Um, one of the things that I actually did do as well uh, was use light wrap on the guy because it's most useful for green screen stuff, but it works perfectly here. If you add a light wrap effect onto the guy's layer, which is man and field unedited, <laughs> and set the source layer to your image. So mine's called matte painting. Um, what it'll do is take the color and light from that image and sort of bleed it onto the guy's outline. And you can control how far that light goes. You can control the intensity. Um, and it's a good way to sort of blend the two plates together uh, and make it just look more realistic. It is very easy to overdo it, light wrap. And you see that a lot. Um, so keep it subtle. You shouldn't really notice that there is light wrap. It should be there, but also not there at the same time. Oh. One of the things that I want to do to match my plate is blur the matte painting a bit. So I'll just use 
I would use a lens blur because that's a bit more realistic, but it'll crash everything. So it won't crash everything. It'll be, it'll make it very slow. Um, so matte painting, I'm just going to add a slight blur effect onto that. Set it to like one. That's too much. 0 0.5. Let's see, 0 0.3. Maybe like 0 0.3, 0 0.2-ish, somewhere in the middle. Cool. I'm also going to add a lens flare into mine because the sun is visible in my shot. So it kind of makes sense. Lens flares, again, you can be overused very easily. Okay. Um, I was guilty of that in my when I was first learning. Uh, but in this, in this case, what I'm going to do is add in a plane. I'll put it below the grade so that everything else affects it, um, everything that I color graded, and do the custom light flares effect. So I'll add that onto the plane. And I'll set the hotspot hot position, zero it out, use layer. And we'll use the point from earlier. So this is the same point that the image itself was parented to. And it should stick it in the sky there. If I move along, you can see it's sort of, it's moving in the same way. Set the blend to screen and move it into the right spot like that. This isn't the right flare for this. So I'll open up the options and pick something better. So. We got loads, spent ages making all of these. <laughs> um, but it was fun because I got to look at references and stuff and be like, what what does what happens in real life? Um, and sort of have recreate that in hit film. Um I think yeah, I'm going, it looks great. Good vibes. Good vibes. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll do Columbia and remove the bright spot because the sun is already in there. So let's do apply. And you can see we've got some um, artifacts there, like that now. They are a bit sharp, so I might throw on a diffuse. The diffuse can come after the flare, and that's fine. So increase the opacity, just blur it out a bit. Um, and then maybe just a regular blur effect before that. Do like three. And then I'll take the intensity down a little bit. Cool. Um, I also want to add a vignette onto mine. How does how does Louisa's look right now? Does she have <laughs> mine's mine's quite um quite basic. Okay. Because cool. it was already blue and green. Yeah. So I didn't need to put like yeah. lens flares sun, on it and all of that. Not in it. The sun isn't in it at all. Mm. So it's yeah. Okay. I've kept it quite kept it quite basic. Cool. And just kind of been watching in awe as you like <laughs> make yours look fantastic. Cool. Let's add a let's do a vignette because there is a, yeah. a right and wrong way to do a vignette. I'm gonna tell you about it now. Okay. So, I'm not going to do anything until you tell me because I want to be right. <laughs> so a vignette, if I if I do the wrong way, um, I'll create a grade layer and add the vignette effect. And I'll make it so that it's quite obvious in mine. So I'll increase the softness, increase the strength. The uh, When a vignette is wrong... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can I hold it in? Can I hold it in? That's okay. It's <laughs> When a vignette is wrong is when it dims the highlights, which is kind of what you mentioned earlier. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, so a vignette. So if you look at mine, you can see that it is killing the sunset. It is taking the the bright colors of the sun, and it's just darkening them. It's not even it's not even darkening. It's sort of just overlaying black onto those pixels, and it's it's blending in that way, and that's awful. Um, especially if you have some white in, in your image, like if I move the vignette so that it is hitting that sunset. Uh, Struggling. Bad vignette allergy. That's what it was. <laughs> that is what it was. Um, you can see that it's absolutely destroying the highlights. So that is the wrong way to do vignettes. The right way is to, if you go into the media panel, there's a new plane at the bottom. Yes. And technically the plane needs to be white, but that would affect our mat and stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is add a fill color effect onto this plane so that it's white. So drag the plane onto the top. Yes. Uh, above so, everything. Yeah, just yeah. above everything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then add a... Uh, uh, no, sorry. Fill color. Yeah. I am getting... Fill color, so it should be solid white. Yes. 
Then I'm going to add the vignette effect onto that. And you can see it is darkening the edges of the white plane. Yes. Now, depend there. Are, okay, so there are a couple different ways to do this. This does feel like it once you see it, it will feel a bit like a, a runaround, but you can make these effects a preset and it's as it's it'll be easy as drag and drop. So you do have to do this the first time, but once you set that up, set it up, it's very easy. So we're gonna add an invert effect onto this. Okay. Invert. So it'll be black with a white vignette. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do a demult effect. So this is gonna get rid of all the black and leave us with a white vignette on our footage. Yes. Then we'll invert it one more time. <laughs> like I said, you can yeah, once you have this done, you can make it all into a, a preset and never have to do all this stuff again. But um, this is what's necessary. So now we should have basically the vignette as normal. But what we're going to do is right click the plane and set the blend at the very top to either soft light or overlay. Either works. I think I usually go with soft light like this. OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to still darken the footage, it's darken the shadows and stuff, but it's going to respect the highlights. It's sort of going to ignore them. So if you toggle the plane on and off, you can see, let me just increase the, the uh, sort of effect of it and decrease the intensity. So if I toggle this vignette on and off, you can see it's darkening the bottom of the frame where the grass is, but it's leaving the sunset almost as it is. It still has an effect on it, but it's not killing it like it was before. Um, so in this case, I would set the vignette back to like 1920 or 1080 by whatever it was and play with the strength um, until I'm happy. I would also put it below the color grade layer, so the grade that we made before. Um, and I haven't been naming my stuff. <laughs> Awful. See, I don't even know what I'm doing. Light flares. This one is the vignette. But that is the, I find, better way to do vignettes because it um, still has the same uh, effect on your image, but it uh, doesn't ruin any bright or highlights in your, in your footage. Very nice. Any questions about that, feel free to send them my way and Tom will shout them out. Oh, well, uh, I've got a question and a statement. The question's from me, but first, the statement. P. Go says, guys, I want to say thank you for all the tutorial, it, uh, and it helped me find my passion, too. And your and both your hair looks great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I paid a lot of money for it. Thank you. <laughs> Are you willing to tell them how it's done? Because most people think it's uh, a hair dye, or like you go to the... Yeah, well, I, I I have somebody bleach it for me because I shouldn't be allowed near bleach. Um, but I just have a shampoo that makes yeah. my hair pink. That's I don't... usually the thing that surprises yeah. people. You yeah. Just do it. yeah, shampoo. It's very, very low effort. Yeah. People think colored hair has to be hard, but I wash my hair. Yeah. If you look at uh, Louise's TikToks, they are more and more pink, as they, which, yeah. is, which is great. <laughs> it's because I've been on camera a lot more since starting this job. And I was like, okay, I'm going to need to sort of like up the pink so mm -hmm. I can like stand out from the background and stuff so i've been yeah, like and it works like you, you yeah. look at our feed and it's like it is it's a it bit of color yeah. yeah absolutely i'm slowly turning fx home pink <laughs> <laughs> great cool um time check it is 5 10 we're doing good wow um i have a question oh yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah question. go ahead what's i mean what's the difference from just using like a uh a plain black layer masked out. out yeah so like I said, this one is a bit of a workaround. The reason I do this is because I still have the controls in the vignette. A mask would be, you could you could create it so that it's in the center and it's you feather it out and stuff, but um, you, can't, you can't make a preset out of a mask. So you'd have to draw it every time and then adjust the feathering. And if you have a specific look, um, do all the settings. If you use the vignette effect, you get those controls exposed and you can make it into a preset. That's a good question. It's what I was thinking of when I was like, it's quite a workaround and there are several ways to do this. I was like, somebody please say that. So, <laughs> thanks, Tom. Um, cool. How are you feeling about your composite? It's it's coming along. It's good. It's, it's, it's good. Look at that. It's, yes. 
if I'm like sitting at like a year seven level, you're over here and like <laughs> you're like you're in your A levels or university, but it's fine. I'm trying, and that's what's important. That is what's important. And I'm only seeing it at like a 45 degree angle, and it's like 10 feet away. Tom, that's I the way to look at it. <laughs> so I can't really see. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Um, what 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 it what it looks like. So yeah, all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. we're basically. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I did. I mean, there are several things that I did in the, in the final one, but um, lens dirt. Lens dirt. You don't have a light source in yours. So technically lens dirt wouldn't make sense, but we're going to add it. We're going to put it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Love a bit of lens dirt. So um, another thing with um, lens dirt, a right and wrong, not wrong. Try to use a real texture if you can with lens dirt, um, because similar to lens flares, the way I, I, I built those was I looked at real flares. With lens dirt, it's, a, it's just a lot more realistic if you have a, a very good texture. So to the grade that I created uh, before for, to do all the color grading, I'm just going to add the lens dirt effect. Um, and again, this one is very easy to go overboard with. So you got to keep it tasteful. Got to keep, gotta keep um, your lens dirt tasteful. Yeah. So this is the oh. default. That's which doesn't look very good. Yeah, no. Um, but that's kind of the case with a lot of things is you have to tweak it. It's not going to look great right off the bat. So I'll lower the threshold on mine. I'll increase the blur. That's going to help quite a bit. It's going to soften some of those edges. Um, and now we need to use an actual custom texture. So this, the one that's on screen now is, I believe, procedurally generated. So it's hit film doing some math and creating all these little spots. In the media panel, we have a texture, which I'll uh, put up on screen here. I don't have my trimmer. Trimmer. Suck. What's the texture? So it's uh, it's the one I kindly named OC7A6426. Oh, that's so, that's so kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> so you can see the texture here on my screen. So I took these down in the studio just over there. Um, splashed some water on a... In the past, I've used a CD case that works. Um, we also did have some plexiglass, big, big old sheet, which was quite handy. Um, splash some water, let it dry, um, put some more on for, for the different layers and stuff, and then shine a light through it. And that's how you get these sort of images. Um, this is two flashlights, one on either side. Play with the colors, play with the focal lengths, um, go in and out of focus, and you can get some really cool results uh, with real lens dirt. So to use that in our comp, you're going to want to drag it from the media panel down into your timeline. And it can be hidden as well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be visible. I will transform it to fit to the frame width so that it fills the entire screen, because I think it probably won't. It depends on how you drag it down. Yeah, you're right. I've done that. Then in the lens dirt settings in the controls panel, there's a section for dirt layer. I can set that from none to OC7 8426.jpg. So catchy. Yeah. Um, and it should have an effect right away. You oh, should yes. be able to see uh, the new texture in there. Yeah. And if you move the layer around for the lens dirt, so in the timeline, not under the lens dirt settings, the actual image itself, the um, effect will update to show that. So you can make it bigger. You can move it around. Um, and it's very easy to sort of customize what that looks like. This one has a nice rainbow fringe that I like to use a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, put that in a nice spot and then customize the intensity, threshold, blur, and everything to fit your scene. Like I said, this one gets overused very quickly. Um, and if you don't have a light source, yeah. technically it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't look very realistic over no. here, but I'm just having fun. Yeah, yeah, just, just play around with it. And, uh, it's all good. Just taking a look yeah. at Louise's Yeah, screen. just it just yeah. is there's there's no way to make this realistic. I'm just having a bit having some fun. Okay. Any questions that have come up? Uh, all right, all well, good. We have would you use the same technique to create something like a cyberpunk scene? Same technique as in NVIDIA Canvas? Uh yeah. No. Or or Change, I guess, uh, say extension, sky replacement. So in terms of the technique for like motion tracking in Roto, yes, it would be the same sort of thing once you have your image actually generated. 
Um, if you wanted to use NVIDIA Canvas for a cyberpunk theme, I don't think it would work because the materials in Canvas are like rocks, dirt, grass. Yeah, there's, there's no, no like, like metal. Metal, and, futuristic yeah. buildings, neon signs, stuff like that. Again, maybe in the future, I would go for Mid Journey or Dolly or something like that that can actually create something from scratch for that. Um, but NVIDIA Canvas, no, you, I don't think you'd be able to do that. Uh, but then, like I said, the technique of putting it in the scene, compositing with motion tracking in the roto, it would be the same. You're just sticking a big old image on the sky pretty much. And that's, it can be, it works, whatever the image is. Cool. And we do have a uh, cyberpunk tutorial as well. The one with Hannah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Remember that? That was a fun one. Yeah. So if you search for um, hit film cam track AR cyberpunk, um, we did one that is more three more three D than this because it's actually a three D environment in Unreal Engine. Um, but that's yeah, it was a cool effect. It was uh, quite nice. I'm just gonna don't show my screen, Tom, because I'm looking at the stream stuff. <laughs> um, I'm just, just checking that we have a, we don't have any videos that I wanted to play for sure. Um, but yeah, if you have if you didn't see the the last stream, we play around a bit more with the AI stuff. So we take we we're not compositing. We're just being like, let's draw stuff here and let's um, type in a script and see what comes out. So do check that out that last stream because it does uh, it's more experimentation rather than what we've done here, which is comp. Um, and we go into a different a couple of different technologies. So Nvidia Canvas, Mid Journey, Dolly. Uh, open AI script. And I think that's it. I think that's all we went into, but more and more stuff is being invented every day. So it's, uh, we might do another one, another AI stream and just cover things that we haven't shown in the past. Cool. Um, uh, I don't want to be in, yeah, I, I don't want to, uh, be accused of ignoring any questions. Uh, so hang on. I do have, I do have one. Okay, can you guys please make a better color grading options for your software? You'll need to be more specific than that. Yes, we need a bit more detail mm -hmm. on that. Uh, better uh, color. Um, I know that DaVinci Resolve is very highly used in the industry and stuff, and there it does. I have dived into it a little bit, and it does have quite a few very intuitive options. Um, so if you have specific ones that you use a lot that you would like to see, uh, let us know because then we can look into that feature specifically and write up like uh, they're called user stories, but. Um, basically request the devs be like, we want this effect. We want to use it this way. Um, so feel free to send in those requests. Again, it does help if you're specific. So please let us know what software you like, uh, what features inside that software work for you, and we will try to get them included in the future. Yeah. Also, we could probably do a color grading live stream because there is quite a bit. I do get uh, a lot of... of, of um, I've done a bunch of different color grading things in the past for social and for shorts and stuff like that. Um, so it is a good subject. I think it would be fun to cover in the future. And there's still stuff like I'm discovering even now, mm -hmm. like effects and stuff. So I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that yeah. with color. So it's yeah, like, I would, there's yeah. so much in there mm -hmm. that like you, you don't even realize. Yeah. And I was talking with Beth, um, one of our uh, support people upstairs, and I, I mentioned the vignette and the lens dirt stuff. And uh, she thought it'd be a good idea to do like a, a session of don't do this, like the wrong way to color grade and the wrong way to use a vignette and, and all this other stuff. So I think, yeah, like you said, there's stuff to discover and there's also stuff that you shouldn't discover. Shouldn't, <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't discover. Don't do this, please. Um, we'll have to look at what I'm curious about this highlights thing. That you <laughs> pull this down now. I, I do it on a lot of photos, to be fair. I try not to do it in videos because I know that other people don't like it as much. Mm -hmm. Maybe in my personal videos, but definitely on like photos that I take <laughs> things, I just like drag the highlights all the way down. Yeah. I don't know why. I just quite like it. I'm, I'm picturing it in my head and I... I don't drag it till it looks like disgusting. Like I just, mm -hmm. you know, like I bring them down enough and I feel like they make, especially <laughs> if it's like a nice blue sky in my picture, I feel like it makes the sky look nicer. Okay. I'm probably picturing it worse than it actually yeah. looks. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you've looked at any of like my Instagram posts or anything mm -hmm. and you haven't gone when you saw okay, it, no. I pull the, I pull the highlights down on all of them. So. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. Then I think, it's fine. I think then. we'll be all right. I <laughs> cool. My little uh, secret. We are at about nine minutes. Um, we do, we do, like I mentioned at the start, we do have a thing we wanted to talk about. Are there any more questions that we can go through? Any topics, any comments? No, no, uh, no questions at this time. It is what it is. 
cool. Okay. okay. I'm just getting situated. Let me stop sharing my screen so that my laptop doesn't explode. My little window to share my screen has disappeared. So okay, cool. mine's just going to share indefinitely in the background. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we love technology. Yeah, it's all good. Um, cool. So yeah, let me take a look at, I'm stalling now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Let me ask you, Louisa, how on, how Louisa. is uh, your first like Sky replacement? And live stream as well. And live stream too. Do you know what? I've had a great time. I thought it was really fun. Um, <laughs> lot, lots of fun. Um, there's a lot of stuff I'd rather have done in mine. But I think yeah. I committed very early to a picture that I didn't really like. So then I couldn't play <laughs> around with like the sunset and stuff. But yeah. it was definitely a lot of fun. Good. Learned yeah, something and, new about the vignette as well. Yes. And like I said, it did I took it took me three hours to do the the final comp. So I did have time to play around yeah. and, and go back and edit stuff. And um if we had done that, we'd be over time now. So I'm, okay. I think we we got a good sort of succinct um live stream in a couple yeah. techniques, learn some learn some new things and uh it's it's all it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, so glad, thanks for thanks for joining us because thank you for having me. Yeah, it's um it's it's not easy being on a live stream as you have found out. Now no, it's, it's, it's constant const talking, there's lights. There's cameras, yeah. sound. I'm trying to organize my agenda and stuff. Yeah. It's all it's uh, it's all good. So, yeah. all right. Uh, so let's talk about the 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 thing that um, I mentioned at the start. This is uh, the reason we're bringing this up is because it's a an announcement, and we want you guys to be as the community sort of involved. Not involved. You can't make the decision for him, but uh, be aware, share your thanks, and just say some kind words at the end of this live stream. Um, so you guys know Ollie. Ollie Thompson, he's been, uh, you know, on the stream. So he's, he's in 90% of the stuff that we make. Um, after today, Ollie will not be at FX Home by our list uh, anymore. He's uh, moving on to something, try, try, try and find something he's more very passionate. He's very passionate about everything. He's looking for something that's more nature focused. He loves the environment. He loves saving the planet. He loves soil con conservation and, and all this other stuff that goes you know over our heads so yeah ollie will be leaving um which is un uh, unfortunate and fortunate because he's like one of the best friends that i've had since i've been here he's in all our stuff he's um energetic he's friendly he's 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 like just a really great guy overall and uh it does you know sort of suck that he's leaving but he's moving on to better things so um, we did want to say that he's in the chat right now. He's uh, Odie Biscuits. If you guys <laughs> want to tag him, um, so that that was the that's the news. You know, he's been in he's been at FX Home for I think it was almost six years. Um, I've been working with him for five years, if you include my internship. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a, a big hole in the in the office for a bit, but um, he'll be doing great things. So yeah, he's gonna smash it. He's, Absolutely, he's gonna be fantastic. Yes. We we will miss him mm -hmm. so much though. For sure. So if you guys, I mean, please do leave like nice comments and stuff for Ollie um, because he's, he, like I said, today his, is his last day and uh, we made a small video. It's not that long. It's only like a minute and a half of showcasing some stuff that he's done in the past. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and play that now. Hey guys, it's a new year. So we've got a new face. This is Ollie. He's the newest member of the hip film team. Hell, yeah. <laughs> 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 you for <forgot>. yeah. <laughs> Before the winners. Here is a honorable mention. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Two big racks of... <laughs> I really like this one because of the props, the location, the shots, the effects that we use, but also the fight choreography. <laughs> I like the acting, the story, the script, the props, the location, the VFX, the music. <laughs> I like how it just degrades. And I said this to yeah. you guys, it just it degrades from like really high quality visual effects to like bloopers. Oh, those are funny. It's to like just awful memes 
that I've made. I didn't make those specifically for this video. They exist um, long. I, I just make them when they occur <laughs> to me. Uh, so yeah, I, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, and again, thank you. I can see the, the kind words coming in for Ollie. I know he's in the chat, um, but it's it's uh, it'll be good. It'll be good, and we'll keep in touch. And um, he'll be coming into the office as well next week for D and D and stuff like that. So this uh, this probably this isn't the last you've seen of Ollie, but he won't be here with us um, anymore. So thank you, Ollie, for everything you've done, and uh, it's been really good. He was on the live stream last time, so if you want to, if you need a, a refill of, of Ollie, he he was on two weeks ago. Can cry to it later tonight. <laughs> just put it on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he's yeah, he there he is. So thank you for the kind words. Been the most awesome community to be a part of. Cool. With that, I think we're gonna we're gonna close it because it is uh, an hour and a half and my voice is gone. So, um, right, yeah. Thank you, Louisa, again for for joining us. Thank, thank you for, for having me. Thank you for sticking through all the the compositing stuff. I know it was I was new and it was um, unsure and it, there's a, always a risk of something going wrong. But yeah. it's new, right. but it's so, exciting. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, bringing, bringing like the sort of TikTok view and everything and, and <laughs> experimenting and all that knowledge. And stuff. Some people on TikTok said they were going to come and watch it. Yeah. So hopefully they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, for comp controlling um, and organizing, helping mm -hmm. us with all the setup and stuff. Um, and thank you again, Ollie, for, for being, you know, Ollie. I can't really say it any more than that. You guys know what I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you for all the kind, kind comments throughout, all the questions. Um, and we will see you all in the next video. Take, take care, guys. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time.